I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Good afternoon. This is Dr. Bones Live here on a Saturday on a Saturday on at 2:30 where the snow is coming down heavy and it's time for another episode of And now it's time for another episode of Blogger's Corner with Britt. So, Britt, welcome back to the show again. How are you? I'm doing good. How about you? Not too bad at all. So, um first off, like we normally do, Let's get into Arrow, but this week I have not had a chance to watch it, so uh, I hope you don't mind, but this one's on you. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. Um, well, this week's episode was good. Um, not the best episode of the season, but the main storyline was involving Roy, who I don't know if I want to spoil it, but, you know, after a whole episode of being two feet away from his sister's boyfriend, was unable to identify him as um, Oliver Queen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so uh, two and two finally come together um, in the most obvious of ways uh, to be revealed to Roy, who becomes a new member of the team. And just, I can't stand that guy. And that was like the main story was priming Roy. I, I it was a very Roy centric episode, and then the other thing was a political storyline involving Oliver's mom, who um, her ex husband is trying to get her to run. Right? I guess they're. I don't know if they're divorced or not. But anyway, um, they might be estranged. I'm not sure. Anyway, <laughs> um, he is trying to convince her to run for office against uh, the other guy who's the bad. His name is escaping right now. Is it Sebastian Blood? I yeah. hope I'm getting that yeah. right. No, you're right. Okay, and he, she's trying to get her run for political office because they believe she's going to win. And the only thing she believes could hinder this is um, Thea's true fraternity coming out. Because of that, she just killed like a millions, like thousands of people. That would not hurt her campaign, but the fraternity secret definitely would. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even get me started. It was, uh, this woman running, uh, they've kind of pushed the credulity with some of the storylines, but there's no way this woman would be able to run for public office after just getting away with the uh, world crime. Yeah, well, no kidding. And you know what? I just, I was kind of hoping you'd say it was a lot better because, you know, I think if they keep on uh, somewhat kind of, uh, I don't know if the best way to put it is like maybe a mellow path, then they're going to start uh, losing people's interests as well as mine. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. What to, I think when it things is just the behind the scenes stuff with the the you know writers are maybe being distracted on the spinoff episode with the Flash, and that's just causing quality to go down. I think I mentioned last week I saw the same thing happen with the Empire Diaries. They had a spinoff show, and things just haven't been the same since all that got started. So I, I think I hope that once the Flash happens and they have other people working on that, things will improve. But I mean, it is just, they're really pushing it with the whole, and I'm not a big fan of political storylines, like where people run for office, but this is just really pushing credulity. Oh, I, I don't know why they would have thrown that in. I guess it's for another storyline because you're right, because I'm enjoying the time unless it like really, because like, I don't, I don't think that's like uh, <clears throat> central to the idea of the show, you know, whether his mother's in office or not. <laughs> exactly. So. And uh, I just, yeah, it's almost like they're they're reaching for storylines now, and it kind of sucks because, like, even though, like, obviously Roy's a big pain in the butt, they got to do something right to uh, Lou do the fact that he's going to be a Red Robin. And like I pointed out uh, uh, last week, a Red Arrow, sorry, Red Robin. <laughs> sorry, Red Arrow, my apologies. Um, that uh, for the past little bit, and even in the earlier shows, if he knows he's always wearing the red hoodie all the time, so... I mean, if that wasn't a tip off already, I don't know what is. Oh yeah, absolutely. I totally think you're right on that. I, I just, I really can't stand that character, and I just have no interest in him whatsoever. There's so many more interesting characters to explore, and I don't know why he is being brought in. The same thing happened. The same actor was on um, 
the show Teen Wolf, and it became all about him on that show. And then he left that show to now make this all about him. I, I don't understand. He was not the central character of Teen Wolf either, but somehow that he just tends to all-encompass the shows he's on. I, I don't understand why. <laughs> well, your, your guess is as good as mine for that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I really couldn't I, tell you. <laughs> Go ahead. I, and, and to just can kind of connect to the Grammys. He, I saw that on Twitter, people thought that he was Hunter Hayes, the country music star, and were congratulating him on a Grammy. Really? Because apparently they, people think they really look a lot alike. So he's like, thank you, thank you so much. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I don't know what to say about that. But yeah, let's uh, let's move into the Grammys here. Um, I Admittedly, like... Um, uh, well, it said on Rolling Stone that, that uh, the Grammys is some of the highest ratings they ha- they've had in about uh, 20 years or so. But you know what? It wasn't all that exciting. I was actually pretty bummed. Like, I mean, I, I uh, fast forward through quite a bit just because, like, I was just getting uh, maybe a little annoyed with it. And the, right. the thing that got me the most was at the very end when, <clears throat> even though they're going out with a loud bang, it was cut short. And I know they're already over, but... Still, um, because of social media, they got nowhere to hide. And the last person you want to piss off in the rock world, because he's not afraid to say anything, is Trent Rezor from Nine Inch Nails. Because he cut their song short. It was pretty much like a super group at the end. It was Trent Rezor, Queens of the Stone Age, Dave Grohl, and Lindsey Buckingham from Fleetwood Mac. And they got cut short about a minute 20 or so, maybe a little bit longer. And uh, right away, Trent Rezor took to Twitter. And uh, let me uh, read the quote here. He says... In quotation marks, it says, music's biggest night, and then dot, 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 to be respected, dot, 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 a heartfelt, and capital letters now, and uh, (laughs) censoring wouldn't wouldn't do it justice, but a heartfelt, uh, pardon the language, fuck you, uh, to the Grammys he wrote, because they cut it short. (laughs) So, uh, finally, uh, about maybe three days ago or so, uh, the Grammys executive producer did apologize to Trent Reznor, saying, you know, like, we were already running over, we can do much longer, but we had to run these promos, and, but I know, we were excited to have them on, and, you know, kind of pretty much, you know, apologizing them, backtracking at the same time, and, uh, you know, whether it's sincere or not, I don't know, I'm not going to judge it, because, you know, not everything you read is always uh, right on the money, even if it is an apology from a big name like the Grammys, so... We'll go with that for now, but yeah, it was essentially the, the wrong person to piss off or something like that because this isn't the first time he spoke up uh, for something like this. And the last time, I believe, was at uh, the Reading Festival in the UK, and there was an issue there as well. <laughs> so, again, he didn't keep quiet for that one either. Yeah, well, my, I didn't even get to see any of it because my DVR shut off when it like had reached the allotted time, and it, for some, whatever reason, if you don't have... Basically, like once it's already, they've already allowed the time on the DVR, then it's over. And so I did, I missed that whole last section of the Grammys, but I'm um, sorry to hear that got cut out. I heard, I heard about the controversy, but mm. yeah, I agree. The show was, it just went on, and I just had to get this off my chest. First of all, he really needs to stop with the aerobics in the air. Uh-oh. That is just. <laughs> I mean, every single award show, she does it, and it's the same thing. I, I, I'm happy that she's in such great physical condition. I could probably never do what she's doing there, but it has just gotten to be a little too much for me. And then her and that guy, when they, they make, they're they locking bodies and, and doing yoga poses. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just gotten to be too much. And then the biggest shocking appearance for me was Nate Roos from Fun. He now has a porn stash. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, where did that come from? <laughs> but other than that, not a lot of excitement on the show. <laughs> no, very, very true. Uh, you know, it's funny to mention about Pink because you're not the first person who's said that about the aerobics in here. So that's... Uh, Apparently a point of contention with a lot of people that are like, again, I know she can do it, blah, 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 exactly what you said, but I'm sick of seeing it. Now let's try something different here. 
Yes. Oh my gosh. It was like, it was the first time I saw it, I thought it was amazing. And then when you do the same thing over and over, you just like take away from that memory of how great it was the first time you saw it every single time that she repeats it. So it's time to retire it. I, I don't know why the Grammys even, don't they kind of like suggest ideas for these for the artist about kind of what would be a good thing to do? Right. Well, you um, I don't know. I mean, I think it's parsing the yards. No, they got they gotta kind of uh, sway a little bit for the Grammys, but at the same time too is like you know I think uh, at all in the end that uh, they the artists just like normal will have the complete creative control of the whole thing. Okay. Well, I think they someone someone needs to in Pink's uh, circle needs to say you know let's come on off the trapeze bar and. Yeah. The well, ribbons. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just my, th uh, just my only opinion though. Just because I would think that after you know, like for so many years being that big, that you no, know, they'd be willing to bend a little bit, but not too much. So I mean, some yeah. artists are very stubborn, right? So that's why I'm saying that. Like, I don't have uh, any hundred percent fact on that, but uh, that would be my guess for sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, another thing I read some people criticizing was how many people were um, playing the piano. And I have to say, I did not bother me because that's a musical instrument, and I know I would much rather have somebody playing the piano than you know not playing anything at all. I consider that like an amazing skill, and as a musician, you want to see them showcase that. Right, you know, and there there was quite a bit. Uh, I mean, the Metallica performance, you know, Lang Lang was amazing, like hats off like uh, a very good uh penis but uh other than that i just like as i'm just done with metallica you know stop trying to recreate something that happened like almost 20 years ago now i mean like the when they lost out it still cracks me up even though you know that album the the song that was nominated that didn't win that album was probably their oh in my eyes was their last very solid awesome album because after that as far as i'm concerned they went downhill but uh it was funny and kind of kind of sucked at the same time too. But they got beaten out by Jethro Tull. Mm. So and it was, it was like like it was like for a, a metal hard rock song. It was like well, I, like Jethro Tull is heavy, but they're not that heavy, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> so I mean right. I mean I, I, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say I had to. I watched the first half of the metallic performance, and after a while, I started to feel like I might have had a hematoma, so I decided to skirt on. And, uh, like, There's nothing new happening here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to give it a give it at least a at least a shot, and I was like, okay, done. <laughs> yeah, same here. So, you know, thank thank you, PBR. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other thing that was uh kind of interesting was uh. That uh, Macklemore uh, said that he believed that uh, the award should have gone to Kendrick Lamar and that he got robbed, and he's, he apologized for it. It's like, okay, <laughs> I mean, fa fair enough that yeah. you know that you want to give props to the musicians, and that's really good to hear. But like, I I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm not sure what the point of that of that apology was, or just saying that. Maybe he wanted Kendrick Lamar to come out and say, like, no, no, you were totally deserved it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that could be a possibility. So. Yeah, so, I heard about that, and I was very confused over what what the whole point of that was. Like, well, people did vote. And just <laughs> When you argue with the vote so much, it's like, okay, well, then you're kind of disrespecting the people who cast their vote for you. So. Well, that's absolutely right. You know? Yeah, uh, it makes perfect sense. So. Yeah, other than that, yeah, the Grammys were eh, like, just like, I just don't know if I want to bother. But obviously, the big winners this year were uh, Daft Punk, Lord, and uh, Macklemore. And, uh, yeah, can I just say something about Daft Punk? Yep. How, yeah, okay, I, I love the song Get Lucky, I think that's great, but I don't, other than spinning the records or whatnot, I don't really, they don't sing on the album, they don't sing on the song. And so I don't really understand how they're getting awards with people who are writing and singing and doing the instrumentation. I, I just don't understand that. Maybe I'm out of the loop-de-loop. -loop. <laughs> well, you know, it was, it's kind of the same thing uh, as, like, years ago. They even, like, well, when they kind of started introducing not uh, techno but more electronic because, like, 
industrial was always kind of included in the rock scene because there was guitar drums the whole deal but uh like you know electronic stuff like uh or i mean like some electronic but uh you no know, bands like prodigy that sort of thing okay and so i mean that, that's that that's my personal opinion is they're they're probably just uh doing this it's probably i guess like <clears throat> uh way to salute i guess to give them hats off because like i mean there's not really too many other awards that except for let's say uh the, let's say the mpv music awards or something like that you know there's not much else they could be awarded for i guess and since even though they're not singing you know i guess the arrangement that stuff's not always the easiest thing so that would be my personal opinion as to why they're justifying kind of tossing that stuff into the mix all right well that makes sense i I just, you know, I'm kind of mixed on all, all of that, but well, no, no, I, I know what you're saying. Seeing them, the space helmets. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're saying that one. Um, uh, just uh, we're actually gonna move uh into a couple things. Uh, obviously because Super Bowls tomorrow, but just before we get to that, uh, this uh gave me a chuckle. I mean, I, it's not necessarily a funny headline, just because like I'm not a big fan of the band, and since we just talked about them. Um, Talgo's James Hetfield said uh, that their Orient Festival was a uh, disaster financially. And you know what? I, I'm not surprised. I think uh, that at this point, more and more people start, start to give up because obviously they've gained some new fans, but lost a lot of old and will come hardcore fans, uh, such as myself. So it just things aren't kind of going the way they want to, even though they're performing like uh, old albums in its entirety. It's like, well, you know, it's... Not really that cool, especially since the lineup's nowhere near the same, and you know, so it's just like, eh, you know, I'm not gonna pay like hundred bucks for a festival. I'll be more inclined to see the people playing other than them. So, yes. But that's uh, again, that's just uh, just my personal opinion there. Um, and a few other things, and good old Bieber. So, um, he's supposed to be arraigned for the DUI charge on Valentine's Day. I don't know why they it pointed that out because I don't think it really matters when he's going to be arraigned because we all know what's going to happen coming out of that anyways. But uh, the other thing uh, was, is apparently this week he turned himself in for assault on his limo driver from an incident I think it was last year in Toronto. And so now he's in jail again, I believe, and they're trying to sort through that mess. But apparently, you know, obviously his attorney's claiming his innocence, yada, 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 blah, blah. So, you know, and, uh, Relating to that, um, this isn't involves money because obviously we know money means you can buy your way out of a lot of things. That being said, uh, the other day on Leno, guess who piped up to say something and told Bieber, <laughs> Miley Cyrus, addresses Bieber on Leno and it says, you know, you got to pay people to keep yourself out of trouble. <laughs> and, you know, what a way, like... You're already doing all this other stuff, and I could care less. I know it's for like, attention and, and media, blah, 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 and, like, whatever. You know, I don't care what she's doing. But doing this, you know, like, um, not necessarily a good thing for your for your image, even if you're trying to gain some of an older crowd, because this is just going to sink you. Pretty much uh, telling the younger crowd that, you know what, it's okay. If you got money, you can pay your way out of trouble. You can do anything you want. Yeah, that's very true. I didn't get why she should be saying anything right now. I mean, I know that she's saying that she didn't, hadn't done anything. It, yeah, she's doing stuff that maybe would maybe consider immoral, but she's not doing anything illegal. Quite frankly, I think it should be a crime to stick your tongue out as much as she does. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like a assault on my eye, my eyeballs. But I think that uh, you know she only has this pipe down. And she's not too far away from him and she was bragging about you know doing pot and all this other stuff it's you rebel if she were, <laughs> yeah she's a real rebel um, <laughs> if she was done in if she were down in texas she'd be in in you know deep trouble with all that yeah she's it's legal in california but it's like all a matter of positioning so i don't she shouldn't be up on any kind of high horse looking at her nose at him but i i know that they have had so many um, signatures that people are trying to deport him out of America. Um, <laughs> people, calm. If, if, if all of you I saw put their name to try to um, get out of the country and maybe focus on something else, we would have such a much better place to live. I mean, you guys are trying to put. I mean, I just I was just wowed by how much passion that he's dwelled up there. And that there are other things that people don't feel any passion about that kind of are more effective than 
on your life than having a rogue pop star out and about. Well, no kidding. And pretty much what it comes down to is no power to protest and freedom of speech. You know, in many ways, it's very good. In many ways, it kind of gets annoying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that is true. I mean, I I applaud everyone, though, for for using their voice. Uh, It was, you know, what you've been given the right to use. So, yeah, I mean, so, uh, what more can you say in this? So, um, now, uh, since uh, we did play this last week, but since the Super Bowl is coming up tomorrow, and unfortunately for us Canadians, we got to watch the commercials on YouTube, because even though we get the Super Bowl, we get the Canadian commercials. And honestly, and it's not not, not to say not to, uh, to Canadians, but the commercials usually aren't that funny. <laughs> so, so the, the American ones are usually a lot funnier, so... That being said, let's uh, listen to oh, my favorite uh, Bud Light commercial from 2010 for the Super Bowl. And this one's entitled Swear Jar. What's that? That's Swear Jar. Every time someone swears, you put a quarter in it. Who gets the money? I don't know. We'll use it to buy something for the office, like a case of Bud Light or something. Fucking awesome. <laughs> hey, Bob. Hey, Jim. <laughs> Eric, I have a bag of mine three for you. Can I borrow your f***ing pen? Will the owner of a white station wagon please go f*** yourself? We're going to go down there, and we're going to f*** some We're going to f*** some We're going to f*** some Let me down. Shut the that is one of my favorite commercials that was really well done and uh no they've uh, been getting better over the years so i'm kind of looking forward to seeing the commercials tomorrow i know i'll have to watch them on youtube but that's all right so the new budweiser commercials are usually good too and you never know what to come up with. Some of them have been like exceptionally good. Some of them have been uh, just a little drawn out. Like obviously it's for show, and that's the point they're trying to get across to buy the product. But some of them, I think, is just a little overdone. But you know what? I'm not the one making the call, and I'm not the one paying the millions of dollars for a 30 second spot. So <clears throat> very true. I'm excited because there's going to be a Full House commercial. Oh really? Yes, the guys have gotten together, uh, Bob Saget, Dave Coulier, John Stamos, and so they are going to be reuniting for a commercial. They're promoting on Jimmy Fallon this week. I believe this is getting us one step closer to the reunion we've all been waiting for, an actual continuation for the original store, uh, Full House Story, so everyone get very excited. I know I am. Oh, come on. Cut it out. <laughs> have mercy. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> You know, and actually, on that note, I talked really about this last week, is I'm pretty sure it's confirmed that there will be a Seinfeld commercial as well tomorrow. And it's going to... Yeah, I heard that. So it's supposed to be uh, at the place, I can't remember the actual name of the restaurant, but it's called Monks on the show. So that should be interesting to see and see what that com- uh, what comes out of that. I'm hoping it'd be pretty funny, so... Well, I would hope so, because uh, they're just trying to put something together for uh, probably, what do you think, a minute? Do you think it'll last? Uh, I would give it about a minute, obviously. Well, well not obviously, okay. but just because, you know, like, uh, obviously most shows, there's some very long-winded conversations. So, well, maybe long-winded is a wrong, uh, wrong uh, choice of words, but, you know, they, they talk quite a bit, so I could see them getting in a minute easily. Oh, neat. So, yeah, so that should be exciting for all those fans. I guess they're trying to get some 90s nostalgia working. Well, you know what? That would be my guess, and you know what? I'm not complaining. I'm completely cool with that, so... Yes, me too. And uh, a couple other things about the Super Bowl. Obviously, there'll be some big names like Bruno Mars. And uh, one I'm actually uh, really interested to see is uh, the, and here is the new U2 song called Invisible, which they've been pretty much saying it's like a sneak preview of the new album. So that should be uh, pretty interesting. I'm not going to say I'm a uh, uh, like massive, massive fan of... Uh, of uh, YouTube, I still uh, respect them and like them very much. I mean, I'm more partial to the older albums, and uh, I'm uh, very curious to see uh, how the song turns out because obviously they're vets uh, to the music industry and they've been constantly changing over the years. And you know, the first big change was their album, and um, blanking on the year, but I want to say around like 92, 93, which was Octune Baby, which kind of started changing things. And then later on, they did Zeropa, which I, 
they even they've said it's not one of their better albums, which many people agree. But luckily, they came back from that and uh, stormed the scene again and kind of did what they were meant to do. Yeah, it's exciting. I like their old stuff too. I, I really wish that Bono would change the color of his um the glasses, his sunglasses. Well, you know what? Um, I, oh, you now with that, I've heard um apparently like. I'm pretty sure Harry's got uh, macular degeneration. That's why this, there's always, pretty much always wearing sunglasses. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure that's what I what I've heard. Like, I mean, nobody quote me on that 100, percent but I'm pretty positive that's what I heard. It's because of, actually because of his vision. That's why those glasses are constantly on. Oh, huh, I've never heard that. I always whenever I hear people talk about, it, they act like it was a fashion choice, and I feel bad. I'm sorry. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't, you don't, don't feel bad. Like I said, I'm not 100, percent but I'm pretty positive I heard something about that. So yeah, that'll be uh, interesting to see. Uh, Bruno Mars, you know, he's he's a, a, a very good artist, and you know, I much respect for him. Like, I'm not a big fan of music, but I am you no know, much respect to the to his uh, creations and that sort of thing. But I'm not all that excited to see Bruno Mars. I mean, like, and lately, obviously, a lot of his songs started being commercials, and you hear them all the time now, and it's just driving me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I mean, like I said, I just like not a fan of music, but I respect him as an artist. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, I mean, I, I was going to say, yeah, I think that he probably has overlent um, the commercial things, but the, I really like his music. The only song that's just gotten kind of old was the Locked Out of Heaven song. But other than that, I, I really enjoy his stuff. I'm excited because he's going to be on there and the Red Hot Chili Peppers, which is one of my favorite bands of all time. I'm very excited. I hope they sing Scar Tissue. Uh, is there a particular song you want to hear? <laughs> um, see, I am, I'm more, more old school Chili Peppers. I mean, Californication was a really good album. It's pretty much, uh, John Frusciante's reinduction of the band after years of, we'll call it exile. And, yeah. uh, so, um, I don't know. I'd, I'd more, I'd more want to hear, uh, like, like an older song, like, uh, uh, Hmm. That's I know that's a that's a good question. Uh, I I I'd actually you know what if I heard a lot. I mean I've seen them live a few uh, bunch of times, but if they played it this time around, they played "Knock Me Down." That would be awesome, and that's from the album "Mother's Milk." And was also on their album called "What Hits," which is a bunch of different hits from other different albums. So like from "Uplift Muffle Party Plan" and "Freaky Styley" and original stuff. And those two were with their old guitarist, Hello Solback, who unfortunately uh, died of a heroin overdose. And then they had a uh, quote unquote Jack Irons problem. Jack Irons uh, was a drummer that kind of bounced around and kind of, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, and uh, so was pretty much was trying to replace him because each time, like, you know, he'd quit, rejoin, quit, rejoin sort of thing. So, <clears throat> you no, know, they went through a few guitars before they uh, got uh, John Frusciante back and kind of kind of, I guess, rekindle the, the old magic they had together. And, I mean, there is so much talent in that band. And uh, Flea, the bassist, that guy is just unreal. And he's done so many projects, like, here and everywhere. And just because he's that good of a bassist and everybody wants to have him. It's like uh, it's like what Dave Grohl does, you know? Flea is that type of bassist. <clears throat> and he's played with other bands, such as James Addiction and... Uh, and just a whole bunch of different stuff, and it just uh, just something to see, and uh, quite quite the musician. So, well, it's exciting. <laughs> so yeah, well yeah. So I mean, that, that was pretty much the point I was getting to. But yeah, I mean, uh, I uh, I think it's like I grew up in the Chili Peppers because the Chili Peppers were big when like pretty much when I was in high school because I was like right, uh, you know, uh, uh, smacked up at the beginning of the of the we'll call it the grunge movement. You know with. Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, Stone Noble Pilots, Nirvana, Red Chili Peppers, Pearl Jam, yeah. all, all those bands yeah. were just starting to uh, kind of hit the mainstream. So, no, that that was uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call it my my younger days. <laughs> but uh, I'm still a big fan of Chili Peppers, and I've I've seen them a few times actually. I saw them for the Californication tour, and uh, that was actually a really good show because uh, Stone Noble Pilots opened up for them, uh, and that was when they had their album number four out, which is pretty much their last kind of full length album together. And uh, it was a decent show. And before that, I'd seen them for their album, which came out like 93, which is Blood, Sex, Sugar, Magic. And that was an awesome concert. And the last thing I got to see the Chili Peppers, just because I did get a chance to meet them, and it was awesome. I got to meet their drummer, Chad Smith. And that was like, that would that made my day. And this, this is actually an interesting story. So the quick rundown is I was leaving the U.S. 
and I was doing uh, landscaping. So just, just, just basic yard work at a house around the corner from my dad's house. And uh, the woman I was working for uh, asked me what I was doing, doing during the summer because I was over there you know, quite a bit, helping her with stuff around the house and outside, that sort of thing. And I said, well, you know, uh, this Thursday, because uh, I'm going to see uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And, she, and then she says, she says, oh, Chad Smith? And my jaw dropped. I looked at her. I was like, because this woman's was like middle 60s, almost 70s. Like, how do you know who Chad Smith is? You know, <laughs> which came out of my mouth. I mean, like, not, not, not more, more like a, more, more like a, like a, a shock than like a rude tone. And she says, well, she goes, he used to live just down the street here. I was like, you gotta be effing kidding me. He's like, really? She goes, oh yeah. She goes, so cause my my daughter and uh, him used to play with growing up, and it's like, oh my god. <laughs> so, and then she goes on to tell me. She says, well, you know, every year, uh, a lot of the um, people used to live in the neighborhood. You now the ladies get together and they go for a breakfast. They fly to Michigan and they go to breakfast. And she goes, well, uh, tomorrow, because I'll be doing that breakfast and I'll be seeing Chad's mother. She goes, well, so I'll talk to him and see if there's anything we could do. I was like, that would that would be great, you know thinking like no like uh you know she probably will but she may forget so i'm not really counting on anything so the next day pretty much the the day of the concert uh i uh i i'm a smoker and people know that so <clears throat> no i went down the end driveway went down the road to have a smoke and this big escalade pulls up i'm thinking like who, no who is this guy steps out the door opens and like my jaw dropped it was chad smith i was like i couldn't believe it so Whoa. so he came up and of course you know a lot of people get uh uh starstruck and kind of fumble over the words and i didn't think i was gonna be one of those people but the first words out of my mouth was man do you know who you are <laughs> <laughs> and and he, st he, st he started laughing he goes yeah i got a pretty good idea <laughs> you know i was like i was like i was like i'm sorry guys like, i was like so nice to meet you so he stayed for about five minutes. I uh, had a quick little chat, and he gave me uh, some signed drumsticks. And then he goes, "All right, he goes. I'll see you at the show tonight." And then uh, uh, he says, uh, "He goes, because when you go to the show, go to the will call window. There'll be something waiting there for you." So I was like, "I was like, oh, cool." So, you know, I get there, and uh, this is at the place. Uh, it's uh, the DT Energy Center now, but it's what's called now. It's called be uh, called Pine Knob, and it's an outdoor pavilion. So there's a lawn, and then there's a pavilion. The whole the whole deal. And we had seats that were halfway up, and we went to the booth and told them who he was, and uh, they'd upgrade us to third row. No way. And so, yeah, we were in the third row, so close enough, you know, it was like, that was awesome. Wow, that's so cool. That's so nice. Yeah, he's a really cool guy. Yeah, I was very impressed. And the one thing I learned after that is since he grew up in Michigan and went to the same high school that I went to for a year, it was pretty much my, my senior year, and uh, he used to come back every year, I think still does once in a while, to the music class because uh, the teacher there, his name is Mr. Price, uh, taught Chad Smith uh, growing up. So he comes back and talks to class and he'll sign uh, autographs for them. That is, that is really cool. It's always good to hear stories like that. Like someone like really appreciates their roots and then gives back. That, that is really, really nice. Now, I do have a technical question. When, how does someone, I know this is going to sound really stupid. I'm probably going to fool myself like I did with the bio question. But <laughs> uh, how does, so, apologies for that again. Uh, how does one sign drumsticks? Pretty much there's, uh, because they're, they're thin to the top but thicker at the bottom. Okay. So he really just took a sharpie and you know kind of scribbled along the flat edge of it. Oh, neat. Okay. So, well, that makes sense. And plus, he's got a relatively short name, and plus, with his signature, there's only it only looks like there's like five letters, anyways. So. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it was a uh, it was a uh, really cool, and like uh, that was just like you no, know, was that was an awesome moment. I can I'll never forget that. <laughs> that is so cool. That, that is really, really neat. And, and, and it'll make you a fan for life. Oh, yeah. You know, of course, you no. Know, after he leaves, like, I'll go, go back and go back to work. And, uh, and, uh, uh she, uh, she comes home and, uh, uh, she says, so, uh, did, did Chad stop by? And I didn't say where I just went up and went up and gave her a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. And, and she's like, yeah, because normally people forget. Yeah. And she's like, I take it he stopped by. He's like, uh huh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so. And so, yeah, it was awesome. It was like, like I said, that, that, uh, definitely, uh, uh, made my day. So, um, that's going to wrap that part up of it. I have actually, uh, a 
few more things, uh, music notes to talk about. Uh, the Jimi Hendrix biopic uh, starring Andre 3000 from Outcast will be playing at the South by Southwest uh, Festival this year. The will be one of the films uh, for the 2014 films in March, and it was debuted uh, last September. Uh, I've not seen it yet. Uh, I'm going to find out a uh, way to watch it because I'm kind of interested to see it. But the one thing was uh, there's no Hendrix music in it, unfortunately, just because the producer, John Ridley, uh, couldn't get the the pretty much the, the family, the Hendrix uh, family and estate to sign off on it. So, But there are other uh, you know, old bands for that time period because it was supposed to be between 66 and 67. And so there's like the Beatles and the Trogs and that sort of thing in there. So uh, it should be an interesting one to see Like uh, when I haven't really looked for its availability yet. So um, I'm assuming I'll, I'll be able to find it somewhere It'll be or it'll be somewhere soon. And uh, just another thing about uh, the Super Bowl really quickly, there will be some stream shows, and that would include the Foo Fighters, Roots, uh, and Imagine Dragons. So apparently they'll be during the halftime show, so you'll be able to find the link uh, for the streaming on the Rolling Stone app. So if you guys don't have it, you can download it or go to the website. It should be right there as well. Um, <clears throat> and just before I forget, because this is kind of funny, uh, Rob Ford, the mayor of Toronto, who got busted for smoking crack and the whole deal, he's defending Bieber. Surprise, surprise, surprise. So all he pretty much said is, you know what? He goes, I wish I had that. Uh, I was, I wish I was that successful when I was nineteen. And he's a kid. And you know what do you expect? And so that's <laughs> no uh, that coming from Rob Ford. You know, whatever. You know what? I mean, I guess, I guess uh, you know, people will kind of uh, defend somewhat likes their own. I don't want to even all go that, that far, but you get the point with that one. <laughs> And the last rock note before we get into your uh, blogs, uh, sorry, I just had a lot this week, uh, ah. is uh, Jane's Addiction last October celebrated their 25th anniversary of their first album, Nothing Shocking, and that's when they got the, the star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and they will be playing, actually, that uh, album in its entirety May 8th at the new Brooklyn Bowl in Las Vegas, so if you're lucky enough to go down and see that, then by all means, check it out. So that's going to do it for rock notes, and Britt, your blogs you've been working on this week, and what do you have for us? I have, well, not too, not too much. The Grammy, like the best and worst of the Grammys, um, a review of the movie Prisoners, which stars Hugh Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, it's kind of more of an ensemble, I guess you'd say, but um, it, it's a thriller. It was a really good movie. It is a very gritty movie. It's very raw. It is... Uh, it's really a risky film, and I just really appreciated the fact that it didn't feel run of the mill or by the numbers, by any stretch of the imagination. It really, sometimes when you watch a movie, you feel like you know how it's all going to end up, and with that, this movie kept you on the edge of your seat. You didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know if it was going to turn out well. I won't spoil if it does, even. And it just really, it, it very, it very different than an average feature film, because Sometimes independent movies take more risk, and this definitely did take a lot of risk, and I really appreciated that. So it was a very good movie. Um, sorry, for some reason I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> um, then there was the uh, betrayal. ABC's betrayal ended its run, I think, last week. So I have a write-up of that. It was not the, the greatest show. Um, it just but was really not the best show. But I, it, it did keep me uh, entertained. I, I did stay with it. For 13 episodes, I don't think it will get th another 13 episodes. And then, finally, Cedar Free It, The Spoils of Babylon, which I talked about before with Kristen Wiig and Tobey Maguire and really, you know, exceptional cast. Uh, right. I tuned in for the third um, segment. I guess they're breaking it up uh, half an hour. They're presenting half an hour and for an hour and then kind of doing these small increments. And I... Uh, I'm, it's very confusing, so I know I'm making it more confusing when I'm describing it. But the bottom line was this past week, or the week before last, was not great. It was really, really horrible. And so I really want to give it another chance, but it just was so bad. I don't know how you could possibly come back from how bad that it was. <laughs> and so that was, I, I don't know, I, I hope I may give it one more chance. Tony McGuire is not my idea of a comedic actor, so he just is really struggling, and it seems like his attempt to the whole show is like taking it as a legit, serious project. Well, with Toby Maguire, one word comes to, mi comes to mind. Nerd! <laughs> no! <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> well, well, 
bless his heart, this is just not the right. This is not the right role for him. He he is not. He was funny sometimes in the Spider Man movies, but it wasn't because I can tell he was trying to be funny. Yeah. It was kind of awkward funny, you know. Yeah, no, and I agree. With you. Um, I mean, he is a good actor. So go ahead, continue. Oh yeah, no, so yeah, I, he is a good actor. I, I, he's not my favorite actor, but it's just kind of a miscast and. Speaking of this casting, did you hear that they have cast Lex Luthor for the new Superman vs. Batman movie? No, I did not. They cast Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Uh oh. <laughs> so, I really like Jesse Eisenberg. 30 Minutes or Less, one of the best comedies of the past uh, 10 years, but that was a bit of a blow. This movie is officially, besides Henry Cavill, is Superman. This is officially one of the worst cast movies of all time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like really i do not know who i need to know who's casting this because they are on they're living in opposite world i don't know what is going on it is just not that's not a good situation well uh yeah it's probably be one to wait till it comes out on dvd yeah it'll be one for to wait till it comes out on network television <laughs> <laughs> not super stoked about that uh, at, at all I, i'm officially just i'm just done with the whole thing <laughs> oh. so yeah that kind of that was kind of that i mean hopefully more we'll have more blogs next week but i was very disappointed by that whole um situation the casting and uh, in other movie news uh pitch perfect did you see the original pitch perfect no actually i can't say that i have i want to see it but i haven't okay. had a chance to see it yet yeah it it was okay it's a very devoted following um so they have uh the director is going to be elizabeth banks who is the actress, the blonde-haired actress, who's been in quite a few things. So a female director this time. That should be interesting. Yeah, that could uh, take it in a different direction. Yeah, and she's, you know, mainly been an actor. So it's always fun when actors direct because sometimes you have an actor's director, but sometimes the director sees things through a different prism. So it'll be fun to see her spin on things. Well, I'll see the first one. So when that second one comes out, I'll be able to kind of, I <clears throat> guess, compare the two. Yes, because there were so many unanswered questions for number one. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about number two. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see. So I should, uh, when I can fit into my busy schedule, have a look at that. Other than that, um, uh, there's, uh, I don't really have a rant prepared this week because uh, I've just been very, very busy and I haven't had a chance to do that. I apologize. So I will make up for next week. And there hasn't been anything, I guess, that, I guess, that really kind of, push my buttons this week, I guess, because I haven't been uh, focused on a lot of things, uh, so to speak. But uh, that's all right. So I'll have one prepared for next week. Until then, uh, Britt, thank you for so much being on the show, like always. Thanks for having me. All right. And so till next weekend, guys, we'll see you then for Bloggers Corner. Uh, until then, thank you so much for listening. And we'll talk to you soon. Phones out.